are such an asshole. Hey everybody, old Cappy here. It's raining <laughs> in Rapid City. And so we might as well get the work done. Uh, this guy has been incredibly patient. I'm not going to uh, use his name because I do believe he wants to be kept anonymous. And he also sent me another email. And so to the client, if you want me to read that other email, which I don't think you do because you want to remain anonymous, let me know. I'm going to just stick with the uh, original video here. <clears throat> and uh, this man writes, Hi, I've been a reader of your work for a few years and have read some of your books. I originally came across your work while doing some economic reading and research and came across your book, Behind the Housing Crash. While I was fully aware at the time that banks and other financial institutions were making poor loans, I was still shocked to find out how banks would do quick loans with little or no financial information or make loans on projects that were sure to fail. I've also read Worthless and passed this advice on to my friend's children as they neared college age. Enjoy the decline and bachelor pad economics. I'm sending this message for a price quote for you to do a YouTube video report on Larry Correa, spelled C-O-R-R-I-E-A. If anyone wants to follow along. Being disinvited from the Origins Game Fair in 2018. I would like you to collect your own faxes. I do not want to give anything else in advance of you forming an initial opinion or risk prejudicing your conclusions or, or report. If you do a Google search and use the search term Larry Korea Origins, you'll come up with all kinds of information talking about the incident in 2018. Good luck and take care. We'll keep you anonymous. All right, so I did look into Larry Korea. <clears throat> and basically, he's actually a really interesting cat. Uh, he's first and foremost an author. Um, he trained as an accountant, I believe, so he had a real degree. He's Mormon, but uh, when he found his... Um, his calling, it was writing, and he writes predominantly uh, fantasy science fiction type of books. And if you look him up on YouTube, or, I'm sorry, Amazon, he's incredibly popular. I mean, he has multiple hundreds of reviews on his books. They're all 4.5 stars or above. Um, so he has a very good following. He is a very good author. People really like his books, and so on. Um, that's, that's who he is. He also ran a gun shop. I think he lives in Utah now. was brought up in California. And, is, uh, and what I found... Interesting, as the client wanted me to do to do my own research, um, we'll get into him getting kicked out of this Origins Game Fair, was how little political stuff there was about him. Maybe I just didn't see it, but it's not like, oh, Larry Correa said X, Y, and Z. It's just, yeah, he's this really cool author and he owned a gun shop at one time. That is about the only sin I could find about this guy uh, before he got kicked out of this, um, or disinvited to this Origins Game Fair. So, <clears throat> that's who Larry Correa is. Um, he's just a guy, he wrote, he writes good books, he lives in Utah with his family, and he was invited to the Origins Game Fair. Now, what ended up happening is, almost as soon as he was invited, uh, the SJWs who have the perpetual machine to put granules of sand in their vaginas went on a tear on this guy. And again, I can't find... Usually it's something because they'll say something critical, constructively critical, or criticism, uh, and it hurts their fee-fees. And we got it because everything is feelings uh, with Social Justice Warrior and nonprofit entities um, <clears throat> like the Origins Game Fair. Uh, but he was invited, and uh, one thing could have been that he was a gun shop owner. Could have been he was religious. Third thing is he also started, um, oh, what was it, the uh, the Hush Puppies Award. That was one thing I forgot to mention, Larry Correa. Puppies Award. Sad Puppies. <clears throat> um, Sad Puppies was an alternative book award to, I guess, the Hugo Awards that awarded uh, non-leftist writers. Um, all, all awards, be it the Nobel Peace Prize, the Oscars, the Rammies, the Grammys, the Trammies, the Whammies, the Bammies, the Lammies, uh, those are all biased to the left. They're, they're, where politics should not have a role in art or music or anything like that, but it does now. So they created this, and he was one of the co-founders of that uh, Sad Puppies Award. So uh, because he was, you can't even say activist, but just said, you know what, I'm sick and tired of this uh, corrupt, bias uh, Hugo Awards, whatever the book awards they were countering, we're going to do that. So that may have upset some people. Uh, anyway, so they filed their complaints to the uh, Origins Game Fair in 2018, 
and they disinvited him. Not really giving him any reason. I mean, it's like, you know, going to YouTube or go to Big Tech, like, what did I do? If you don't know, we're not telling. Uh, you'll never get a response. And so uh, this is uh, not uncommon uh, where someone who does who is not first and foremost a leftist and then the organization or the entity truly comes second, the stated entity or goal or purpose of the entity truly comes second. This is an organization, an entity, a fair, a club, an award ceremony for leftist people who, and then fill in your blank. It's not for the best in the world. It's for leftist people who, and that's sadly pretty, you know, feminism. Leftist people who happen to be women. Uh, environmental and leftist people who fake claiming about the environment. And so now, Origins, Game Fair, whoever runs that, uh, that's been co opted by leftists and, and ideologue. You can be a leftist and not be an ideologue where that's the only thing. But obviously, it has. Obviously, it has. Um, <clears throat> so now, the people who want to attend the Game Fair and see Larry Korea were not able to in 2018. Um, <clears throat> so, do YouTube, collect facts, even if. Uh, Forming your initial opinion or risk prejudicing your conclusions. You do go into that. So, uh, my opinion of this is, yeah, the sky is blue, water's wet, and women have secrets. Let me know what movie that's from without looking it up. Um, and I think, was it Brifault's Law? Or maybe it's not Brifault's Law. Anything that is not explicitly stated to be a conservative group will always turn leftist. And the reason why, and this is what happened with this, Origins Game Fair, and we can look up the people who had it up. But any nonprofit, especially awards or fairs or conferences where we're going to award and pat each other on the back, since they are nonprofits, since they are not actual work and labor, they are invariably co opted by busybodies, leftist social justice warriors, crusaderists is what I would also call them, because these people got nothing else going on in their lives. They and, and maybe it did start out like this is our guild and we're going to award Bob the best electrician. But then people want to sit on these committees and people want to have busybodies who have no skill being electrician. They can't be electricians because they're too lazy. They can't be authors because they're not good enough at being an author. They're not good game designers because they're not good at programming. Well, they'll go. I mean, you see it even in corporate America where in my day, in the olden days, 20 years ago, you had accounting, you had HR, you had a legal department. You had manufacturing, if there was a manufacturing company, uh, finance, and IT. Now, where the busybodies come in, the truly worthless people, now they start coming in these politicized, completely worthless, completely pointless type of nonprofit entities. So it's a division within a for profit entity, but still a nonprofit entity, it's still a waste of time. So you got your CSR, your corporate social responsibility, diversity and inclusion. None of these things have anything to do with the manufacture of widgets or the provision of sales of services or whatever. So corporate America has it where now the worthless, parasitic, crusader, social justice warrior people who don't want to work for a living now are going into the, the touchy-feely departments, HR, diversity and inclusion, corporate social responsibility, whatever. I mean, you want to see a laugh, go look at all the different like Orwellian titles Google has. I mean, digital outsourcing ethic. It's just like, dude, <laughs> like reading, writing, arithmetic things in school. Oh, no, we got to throw a bunch of other stuff in. So just like corporations can be co-opted or have divisions co-opted, industries, specifically the non-productive uh, segments of these industries, your, <clears throat> your, your PACs, your political action committee, your lobbyists, your, um, well, you can even argue lobbyists and unions do provide some value to the, to the workers. Um, but the nonprofits, we're, the United Way, we're going to, hey, how, how many times are you guys getting old enough now? Like you say, stomp out hunger, put an end to hunger. How many decades have you seen that? You think they're ever going to end hunger? Um, so this is one of those instances, you could say Gamergate, uh, the, the Nobel Peace Prize, the Oscars, where a nonprofit entity that is either there to award or celebrate the industry gets co-opted by the lazy, no-goods fucks, you can't even say of the industry, but people who just want to avoid work. And so uh, it's not fair, it's not right, it's, it's again, I hate the politics of it, like, you have to be, it's this fucking cult the millennials and younger have, 
where you have to be a leftist, otherwise you're not allowed to participate in our little club. You're, you should be ostracized from society because you have a different political opinion because you don't want to be taxed at 50%. <laughs> and like I said, I'm trying to find out what Larry, what did he do? He owned a gun store and uh, he, he set up the, the Sad Puppies Award. Okay. It, well, apparently he must have pissed off enough people. And then, you know, these are the perpetually unemployed, perpetual professional victims, professional whiners and complainers. They come from rich daddy's money. They come from government checks. And they got all the time in the world to go and take down somebody who's actually produced something of value for his industry. <laughs> Quite successfully so. He, I, don't, I don't read. I don't really like reading. And science fiction is not my cup of tea. But he, he trust me, as an author, you look at his numbers like, yeah, this guy's immensely popular. He must be a great writer. What he writes, people must love. Um, and then, you know, these no names who we're going to get to who run fairs, conferences, and then succumb like, oh, I heard that there was a complaint that he, whatever, he owns an AR-15 and he's a, even, and they'll make it up. They'll lie or they'll take some, you know how social justice warriors are. They'll completely spin something, take it out of context and, uh, oh my God, did you know she wants to rape babies? You know, it's like, I don't think she said that. Oh no, look, uh, this website quoted another website that quoted another website. And then it's up to the people who run these award ceremonies, these nonprofits, these conferences, these fairs, it's up to them to say, oh, are you going to ignore the professional whiners and complainers and let people in regardless of their religion or their politics? They write damn good books. You know, they make good games. They make good widgets. Will you let them in? Uh, or is it, again, first and foremost, we are a leftist organization that blah, 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 and it ultimately doesn't matter. So here's my, not just my opinion on Larry Correa, it's a simple opinion. It's not fair, but what were you expecting? The real lesson to learn, the other opinion we should learn, I hope Larry knows this, is Larry doesn't need an Origins Game Fair. Larry doesn't need a Hugo Award. Larry doesn't need X, Y. You know what Larry needs to confirm he's a damn good author? It's high sales of his books. And that's the only thing that matters. That's the real award. I mean, come on, you get, I don't, I'm trying to remember the last time the Oscars actually awarded a movie that was good and not some political worthless crap that wasn't completely corrupted by the industry. I mean, we're going back, I think 1989 was when Jack Nicholson, I believe, was up for best actor playing the Batman, which he should have won. And I don't know who won. Some eccentric European actor that played a guy missing an arm, but but spoke French with his finger. Who the hell knows? Um, the Oscars, the, what is it, the Actors Guild? Is that Screen Actors Guild? Whoever does the Oscars, it doesn't matter. It's completely moot. The Emmys, doesn't matter. Hugo Awards, doesn't matter. The Pulitzer, Nobel Peace Prize, these things do not matter because they do not measure what they were claiming to measure, and that is the best in their respective field. They're measuring the best leftists that everybody likes, kind of maybe in this industry. The only thing that matters is, did you guys reward him? Did you like his stuff? Did you buy his books? Did you refer and recommend his books to other people, which everyone should be doing with my books? Uh, that's all that matters. And I, I think reading on Larry, He's happy. He's got his wife and kids. He's got his guns. He's having a grand... He, he's a highly successful author. He gets to work from home. <laughs> he, he's fine. He's happy. I mean, he might be like a little myth, but he's, he's doing all right. And I think the lesson that we all got to learn from this is that these self-declared judges, you know, we're going to determine what's the best thing. They're, they are irrelevant. They're hypocrites. And, and predominantly, they're leftists because the nature of these entities attract lazy people who can't do. You know, like professors in colleges and universities. They can't do. They have to teach. And this is the kind of same thing here. Like if there was a podcaster award, I don't know if there is. I'm sure there is. I don't care if I, I get the award. I don't care if I'm invited to speak at a circuit or a seminar and then they rescind it. 
All right, because I don't. Do you guys tune into my podcast? Do you hire me out at Asshole Consulting? Do you do you bust my balls over the internet and give me a little bit of guff? Now I know I'm winning. I don't need some fucking nobody who doesn't know jack shit, doesn't even have a podcast. But I've sat on a panel and I know how to judge. I have a master's degree in nonprofit, for-profit fairs and conferences. I work at the CSR department over at Google and I know about people initiatives and how to report them. Um, hang on, let me go to the bag of dick stores and then you can go eat the bag of dicks I'm gonna get you. These self-declared, self-important professional associations or award ceremonies or conferences are bullshit. I care if, if I want an opinion, I care about other professionals in the field who are probably better than me. Again, I would, if Rich Cooper said, Aaron, you ought to think about changing this, you ought to think about doing that, I would listen to him. Terrence Pop says it, I'll listen to him. Um, Stefan Molyneux, yeah. Uh, other self-published authors, again, I don't read a lot, but if a, uh, oh, uh, what's his name? Nassim Taleb, um, some respected author or economist came in, hey, you ought to think about that, I'd listen. But some nonprofit with a bunch of tards and morons and people who go, oh, I got I got it to hit the hit the hit. I get it. I mean, really? Really? You're gonna listen to them? So that was what I wanna do next. I wanna do it live. Who's in the Origins Game Fair? Who are their staff? Are these hardworking engineers? Are these also successful authors and gamers and designers? So let's look at the Origins Game Fair. <clears throat> annual gaming convention. All right, so let's just do the Wikipedia and we'll go. Uh, Origins Game Fair is the annual gaming convention that was first held in 1975. Since 1996, it has been held in Columbus, Ohio at the Greater Columbus Convention Center. Origins is run by the Game Manufacturers Association. Origins was chartered to serve gaming in general, including war gaming and miniatures gaming. All right, so everyone's got their, their war hammer on or their shadow run, their D&D on. I used to go to things like this. Um, was this the one where they had problems with the champions playing? A, I don't know. That was Mario Kart. There was some video gaming convention where the champions were so lacking in hygiene they had to force people to use deodorant. <laughs> this, I'm not saying this happens here, but you understand what I'm saying? You understand? Like it, it's it's like. Uh, the, I think it was the Danish health minister. She's like this 350-pound land whale. She's the health minister. Lady, shut the fuck up. You know that bag of dick stores? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you one, too, and you can eat all those as well. Uh, name change, some 2007. Origins typically has a theme each year, which affects some of the events, decorations like banner or art. The Origins mascot will be depicted wearing an outfit related to the theme as well. Boo-da-boo, boo 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 boo, 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 boo. All right, let's let's go see who's who, who sits on it. Who are there a bunch of CPAs and engineers and game designers, successful ones? News, contest, academy, artist, author, clubs, and a distributed game that's press release, volunteer, experience, events, attend. Usually, want to see who's in charge of Origins Game Fair. Okay, bear with me, guys. Community, <clears throat> special guests. Sounds fun. They got a lot of, lot of stuff going on there. Yeah, they got a Doctor Who thing. Cthulhu. Oh, all right. Yeah, no, this is this is good stuff. Okay. Special guest, guest of honor. FAQ. Who are you, people? I want to know. Events, self and safety, families, join the team. Uh, we may have to search a little bit different, guys. Bear with me. Origins Game Fair Board. Oh, I'm going to get board games. <clears throat> Organized by Game Manufacturers Association. Uh, 
Accusations of sexual harassment rock the board gaming community. Um, what do they call it? Panel? Origins Game Fair Management. Assume management in 19... Origins Game Fair. No, I wanted to include management. That's why I typed in management, Google. Show policies. This might give you an idea how, how uh, politicized it's become. <laughs> oh, okay, so... OrangesGameFair.com slash show-policies and there's a picture of these security guards. And dude, okay... I admit right up front, I was no cop, run a cop, security guard, all the stereotypes, but man, this is Paul Blart Mall Cop. <laughs> this is their security. <laughs> oh. uh, anti harassment. No means no, go away. Attire is not consent. Costume on one of the camera. Animals, security, alcohol, smoking, advertising. The largest is about harassment. Where is the management? Show policies. Description of who manages. Origins Game Fair. Uh, Origins Game Fair Management Board. Usually they're all about showing who they are and like, meet the staff! And they list their worthless resume that's eight pages long. It says nothing. Not one accomplishment is listed. Origins Game Fair. Well, maybe let's go to the... Game Manufacturers Association. Shall we try that? I, I, it's almost pointless and moot because the people in charge of this are not... They're not people who make games. Or if they do, it's going to be, what was, what was the gal that made Depression Quest? It was some El Crapo, El Craptastic game. <laughs> uh, game Manufacturers Association Origins Game Fair Board. Gee, okay, um, their website isn't even up. The Game Manufacturers Association. Nonprofit change, I call Melissa, Ohio. Dedicate the advancement of non electronic social games industry. Board, tabletop, booby boo, boobity boo, booby boo. One in Reno, one in Columbus, Ohio, 15,000 person. Consumer show. GAMA.org is gone. And then um, Origins Game Fair. I don't think there's anything. Let me try the Origins Game Fair website one more time. Join. Contact us. Maybe they're, they're on the contact. Okay. Author. Game Master. Press. Retailer. Press. Sometimes I... Experience, site book, exhibit hall, and there's a community. Ooh, the community might have it. <clears throat> oh, they're talking about Columbus, Ohio. Zivid Hall, New Releases Community, Critter Care, Quiet Room, Sensory Friendly Gaming Room? Like if you got sensitive to lights? Okay, that's not gonna... Events, Guest of Honor, Special Guests. Future date, origin, of the show schedule, badge registration. Home. Yeah, guys, I. <clears throat> it's it's not available. I'm not getting anything on people who organized the fair. Um, actually, you know what? We can get a name by looking up who sent the rejection letter. Larry Korea. 
Origins Game Fair 2018. Okay. This will be whoever back then was on the, the deal. Origins Game Fair. John Ward, Executive Director. Let's look up John Ward, Executive Director. I know it's only going to be one guy. and might actually have some managerial experience. John Ward, Executive Manager, Origins Game Fair. Out. He's out as GAMA Executive Director. Okay. File 770. Game Manufacturers Associate and also will not renew Executive Director John Ward's contract. Press release, Board Manufacturer passed a motion electing not to renew the current employment contract of his Executive Director John Ward. Served in for 10 years. This is a non-rule, not an immediate termination. Ward will be around to assist the transition. We withdrew. Yeah, okay. So he's he's known for for withdrawing uh, the invite to Larry Correa. Shortly after publicizing that Korea had been added to the lineup, John Ward, the event's executive director, re review, received so many negative social media comments on Twitter. Particularly, he announced Korea's invitation had been rescinded. Yeah, why not? Why not say I'm sorry? I've done my own research, and he he's not advocating the murder of Jews. Oh, he he owns a gun shop. Oh, horrors of horrors. <clears throat> Ward has extensive experience in the military and state government. Well, what the hell? A retired army officer? Who's in the... God almighty! Criminal justice field. That's sad when you see, like, a war hero collapse to trolls on the internet. The lies of John Ward. Oh, the Victory Girls blog. These gals... <clears throat> Event. There he is. Well, John, I hope, you know, capitulating to the social justice warriors helped you out. I hope that was fun. I don't, we don't have to. Is it wise for GMA to find a new executive director? Uh, let's go to... I just want to see if we can get some more GAMA executive board. And I'm surprised their website's down. Maybe this, maybe this executive committee, GAMA. Oh, this is General Aviators Manufacturers. Never mind. <laughs> General Aviation. No, I don't want that. General Manufacturers Association. That website. General, the Game Manu. Okay, let's go to the Facebook. Um... Yeah. There's the couple guys with the smile. GAMA's new executive director, John Stacy. Let's go about. They're throwing all this pop-up ads in there. And then... I guess there's only one guy. That John Stacy guy. It, it doesn't look like a, doesn't look like a professional outfit. The uh, Gamers Manufacturers Association. Website ain't up. Oh, wait, here it is. Okay, it came back. Here we go. Here we go. It's just down about... Where is the board? Here's the board, finally. <clears throat> Stefan Brassoud. They're not giving us like a like a background. Mary Paul. Da, da, da. Cito Sanchez. I, here's the thing we could you could say, oh, it's just a bunch of soy and geek. It is geekery. They're supposed to be geeks. Supposed to be nerds, so I'm not gonna. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's a Dungeons and Dragons meetup. It, it's 
read my article I wrote about it. Yeah, so that's that's my opinion. Um, so what? He got disinvited to this meetup, and the the Dungeons and Dragons crowd, the the gaming community, has been highly co-opted by activist leftists and social justice warriors. I wrote that article about dungeon. What was it? Something about Asperger's and autism ruining Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, politics has also ruined it. I, again, like I said, it's not about gaming anymore. You can't just go in and have a good pickup game of D&D or Shadowrun, whatever you want to play. It's not going to happen. It's going to be a bunch of activists and leftists and people that are just truly social, not nerd social. Like, nerds could still make friends with them. These people have no functionality at all. It, it's a dead branch of American culture, the, the modern-day visit in person Dungeons & Dragons. Um... I, if I was Larry, if I was you, if I was anyone that got in, I don't know if I would go to, to you know, unless they paid me rather well. I've been invited to speak a couple places, but I got paid. Um, and if they dis, and if they disinvite you, like, oh well, you know, I guess I'll keep doing what I do. Then, yeah, I think I think he'll be all right. Not going to the Origins Gaming Fair. I think he'll be okay. I don't know if you'd want to go. It's so sad, like those Comic-Con. I mean, they were so cool like 20, 15 years ago, and now the politics has just ruined it. And Plus, they always were downtown. I don't want to go downtown anymore. Um, but yeah, if you want to get your geek on, you want to, you, you want to experience uh, fantasy fiction books, you want, to read, you want to get your geek on, don't go to fairs, you know? Just just go enjoy your games, play online, play with some buddies online. Um, but I would I think Larry Korea is gonna be alright. I mean really look at look at the GAMA's website. Not that ASO Consulting has the greatest professional website. You know, I program it, so it's pretty shitty. Uh, but I admit it's shitty. But the GAMA, look at their website and you tell me, holy shit, is that the professional organization? I should feel bad if I got disinvited? Don't worry about it. All right, questions, answers, assleconsulting.com. Stop raining. Maybe I could go hiking. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.